Measuring audio gives a lot of fun, especially when you've got the right tools for the job. And while my old HP 349A may not be a modern audio precision scoped uh, mixed domain distortion analyzer, it's still with a good margin good enough to measure stuff like audio power amplifiers. And before we get started uh, doing a performance report on the Yamaha, I thought I'd just do a quick overview of uh, what uh, tests I usually run on an amplifier that I'm assessing the performance of. This is uh, a printout of the Excel sheet I use, I use for entering data on my computer. And it starts out with general information, specifications and brand names and such of the amplifier. Then we have a distortion versus power test for b both channels. Then we have a measurement of what distortion we get at the rated power for 8 ohms and 4 ohms and for both channels. Then we get uh, another measurement for what power the maximum power the amplifier can perform while staying at or below its rated distortion for and we do it for 8 ohms and 4 ohms and for both channels. And then we do a I do a clipping power test both at 0.1% DHD plus N that's pretty much as high as you can go without it sounding like complete crap and one where we're heavily clipping at 1% DHD plus N and for both channels and for 4 ohms as well as 8 ohms these tests in the grey area will be affected usually by the grid voltage so if the voltage is 220 volts they may not perform as well as if a grid is at 230 but I do what I can to keep that under check then I do an output impedance test and that's uh, essentially done by hooking my load up turning the amplifier to a specific output voltage and then turning the load off on its switch and measuring the change in voltage. Since I know the impedance of the load, I can then calculate the output impedance of the amplifier. And uh, from that I can ca also calculate the damping factor of the amplifier, which is what we're really out for. A good value is f 50 and above. Or ideally, we have a specification, in this case 350 or better, and some amplifiers don't like 4 ohm loads and will not have as good an output impedance when driving 4 ohm loads so I do the test for both 4 and 8 ohms and after that we move on to what I consider to be one of the most important uh, specifications and that's the noise floor and signal to noise ratio the noise floor is measured in microvolts under 200 microvolts or so is fine. And uh, I do this test both with the volume control set to minus infinity, that's uh, all the way to the left, and with the volume control set to the same level as when I do the rated power test. This will produce a more realistic figure, since you don't usually turn the volume all the way to the bottom as soon as the music you're listening to goes silent. And uh, after that, the sheet will calculate for me, there's a very advanced formula in these, I assure you, uh, the signal-to-noise ratio of the amplifier, like the manufacturer's rate, and that is uh, uh, the ratio of the noise voltage with the input shorted and no signal present, compared to the voltage at maximum rated power and uh, I don't really think that's a good way to measure signal to noise ratio since uh, uh, you get the real signal to noise ratio is essentially the same as the distortion measurement we get here at the rated power but the manufacturers like to use this technique since it gives them bigger numbers anyhow after that uh, I just measure the frequency response uh, 0 dB at uh, 1000 Hz 
I will just step my frequency dial from 20, 100, 1000, 10k and 20k. I will also do a THD plus N measurement when I do this with an 80 kHz high pass filter so that we can actually measure the harmonic distortion of 20 kHz. If I use my normal 30 kHz high pass filter all the harmonics from the 20 kHz signal would be filtered out. And I do that test for both the right and the left channels. And that's it. Let's get started. There we go. All our data is neatly put into our spreadsheet left channel and right channel, and all's fine and dandy, except for the fact that the amplifier was clearly clipping at its rated power output of 240 watts per channel. And this is not because the amplifier has any issues, but rather because the grid voltage uh, sagged down to about 220 or so volts when I did that test. So we need to redo those tests in order to get a proper assessment of uh, the amplifier's performance. There we go, I've got my big bad Variac set up to control the voltage and my voltmeter hooked up to the output here. So this thing should be able to keep the mains voltage fairly stable. Well, I would be able to operate in a ma operate it in a manner that will I would to do so anyhow, so let's see what we can do. Aha, there we go, we are set to 240 watts per channel. And if I forgot to hook the fan up to the load, there we go. And we are pushing 240 watts per channel at 230 volts at 0.0043% distortion on the left channel. And that uh, works out fairly well with what the other data I got. It pushed 220 at 0 0.004. Just a slight nudge down. And there we go. Or, yeah, 260 watts at about 0 0.009 on that channel as well. And now I'll turn it down quickly before I burn my load up. So yeah, mains voltage does play a big part on transformer couple of power supplies. No doubt about that. Alright, we're chewing through the tests nicely and we've now come to one of my least favourite things to measure but uh, one of the most important ones as well, the damping factor of the amplifier. This isn't a problem with cheap stuff like uh, the Leapi LP2020A+, where the damping factor is only like 30 or 40 on the good day, but on a big thing like this professional Yamaha, where the damping factor is uh, several hundreds, it gets sort of tricky to measure unless you have a very high res voltmeter. And if you look close to every meter, did you notice when the needle moved? Because I assure you that it did. I just turned my load off and that's the difference we want to see. I'll try and get a close up for you. Okay, you are now seeing the meter really up close. Let's see if you can spot the difference now. The load is off. There you go, the load is now on. That's the difference in uh, output voltage of the amplifier. And since the load is of a no known resistance, we can use this very minuscule voltage difference to calculate the output impedance of the amplifier. But, yeah, it's not easy to measure with a meter like this. Right here you can see the rather 
high-tech formula I used to calculate the so-called signal-to-noise ratio from the output power and the noise voltage. So let's plug in the numbers and see what happens. Just did a measurement, 520 five microvolts. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Once you plug the numbers, it becomes quite clear why the manufacturers prefer to use the minus infinity noise floor rather than the one you get when you actually have the volume turned up. Because yeah, on, on one of the channels there's all, almost an order of magnitude more noise once you turn the volume up. Because I did some messing about with it and it seems as if this channel has some signal cable drawn a bit too close to some mains wiring or the transformer or something because it's pretty much all 50 Hz hum while well, this channel well it's also mostly 50 Hz hum but uh, there's a lot less of it but uh, <laughs> the signal noise ratio this, they, these two with the volume at minus infinity they are both well within spec for the amplifier but and they are pretty much the same really I couldn't make up any difference at all in the noise voltage of them but when you turn the volume up you get a clear difference between uh, the channels and uh, this I mean it's a 6 dB difference in noise floor so this is most probably audible it's still a decent signal to noise ratio so it's probably not going to be an issue and I I'm definitely not going to try and do anything about it at least not for another while yeah for measuring the frequency response this HP meter has a fairly handy feature called the relative uh, level and you just flick this switch and while our real input level is like minus 2 dB full scale, 25 volts, we can just pull this knob band, set ourselves up right at the 0 dB mark. So, come on. Now we're referenced to 0 dB, and then the change in amplitude will be referenced to that just put it to 100 kilohertz and you can see we're almost 10 dB down there we go three nicely filled out papers and if we look at the power versus distortion chart we can see that we are well within specifications on this unit the spec is 0.01 percent or less at through 1 watt through to 240 watts and we're pretty much within it from 1 watt through 260 watts on one channel and 500 milliwatts through 260 watts on the other so that's just fantastic and the maximum amount of power I could push note that the grid voltage will affect this was 252 watts on each channel and that's all fine the left channel was slightly better at uh, 4 ohm lows though, pushing 441 watts while the right channel would only push 420 and as you can see this is with one channel driven only the number would be significantly lower if I were to drive both channels but I don't have a load capable of doing that at the moment clipping power nothing too exciting 253, 253, 265 uh, pretty much on both channels at the 1% distortion mark which is pretty hard clipping no spec for the 4 ohm load the damping factor is as you saw fairly hard to measure and I don't really get more than 0.1 of a volt resolution and since we get a damping factor of 209 of a slightly lower voltage when we measure a 4 ohm load I would believe that uh, this is actually within the 350 or greater spec since it could be 30.95 or something like that 
I will have to measure that again if I ever get a proper multimeter. And as you saw before, the noise voltage is, well, a bit strange. The signal to noise ratio is fine if you spec it like the manufacturer, but uh, there's something if you go on with the right channel, taking in a bit of, bit too much 50 hertz hum. But it shouldn't be too noticeable unless the gain is cranked way up, and the way I will be using this amplifier, I'll never do that. The frequency response is really great. You can see we're down only 0.01 decibel at 20 Hz and 0.2 decibels at 20k. And there's pretty much no distortion to talk about across the frequency range. The left channel performs slightly better than the right one. Though, but yeah, there you go. I am rather pleased with these results and I feel good about putting this amplifier in service, in service now. Probably gonna put it up with my HTPC. But yeah, until next time, cheerio! Postscript. This is the Pioneer SX950 that uh, has been driving my home theatre speakers for a while now and as if it was eavesdropping on me when I filmed the Yamaha performance test video. The same night I was finished filming, it blew up again. That's where this thing will never work properly. And I think this is the fourth time it's blown up on me now. I am getting tired of fixing it, but I suppose you guys might enjoy the video of it. Cheerio!